Time for another classic. We're ranking the albums of Norma Jean. So getting right into it, before Norma Jean was Norma Jean, we had Ludacris and their first album, Throwing Myself, in 2001. Lots of similarities here to Bless the Martyr, which we're going to talk about in a minute, but also kind of Zayo with the often slower, more atmospheric focus of tracks like Blacksmith and Patiently Philadelphia. Which tracks, because who should I see in the production credits other than Jesse Smith, the original drummer of Zayo? The Annie Halat Ion and Light Blue Collar are kind of low key bangers though. A very early 2000s metalcore record that captures the spirit of the time. It's actually pretty solid overall, but definitely among the last I reach for if I'm in the mood. So I'm putting it at D and I want to be really clear because sometimes people get mad. This is all just relative within their own discography. It's not something I would give a D grade to on its own, which is why I've got these extra helpful descriptions alongside the letters. Moving along, we have the classic Bless the Martyr and Kiss the Child in 2002. So I always find it hard to rank these next two albums within the rest of the discography because they are classics, but also inherently so different in style from the ones that follow. This era has more of that classic 90s hardcore and mathcore influence. And on that note, let it also be known to those unfamiliar that this is considered a seminal album for the metalcore scene as a whole. Tons of aggressive and highly dissonant tracks here like face face creating something out of nothing only to destroy it and of course the goaded memphis will be laid to waste So many classic lyrics too, like bringing a knife to a gunfight, she simply will not die, they're walking to Wall Street in a straitjacket. Josh will always be the master of these. I also like the contrast of the more chill instrumentation with Josh's vitriolic screaming on Sometimes It's Our Mistakes. Now again, I want to be clear that this was my first Norma Jean album and I love it to death as I do the work he went on to do with The Chariot after this, but I do have some critiques. Well, then everyone loses their minds. There was a trope in the 2000s where metalcore bands love to put a long epic track right in the middle of the album and this definitely falls victim to that. Despite it being a neat addition to the track listing, it sort of messes up the flow and maybe should have been the closer. Beyond that, I'm sure people are going to be pissy that I don't rank this at the top for its legendary status, but the reality is that for me personally, it's not the first album I'm going to reach for these days and I think that their songwriting has actually only gotten better, so I'm putting it at A tier. Yeah, well... You know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. And they followed that up with Oh God, The Aftermath in 2005. Now, once again, this album is a banger, no question, especially for the time it was one of those peak genre releases, even with the vocalist change. And the ad spots on Headbangers Ball with the video for Bayonet Work were absolutely unavoidable my freshman year in the college dorms. <laughs> Still a top tier track, I might add. What a goddamn hook. So again, this is the first album with Corey taking over on vocals, but I'd argue that his approach and the overall sound is still largely more in line with the Josh era at this point. That and the obvious influence of Botch in particular. Lots of very We Are Romans-esque riffs on some of my favorites here, like Verta Braille, Lie Arsenic, Dilemma Machine, and the insanely groovy Carrick Tantula. Just hook it to my veins! But as hype as this album is, I do have, again, a few criticisms, and I'm sure some of the purists out there are going to get their panties in a twist about it again. For one, the mix is kind of shit. I've always considered it to be very blown out and a prime example of the loudness wars issues going around at this time. And then once again, they mess up the momentum with the big middle track this time in Disconnect High. And again, I just think their guitar work and songwriting has only gotten better from here. So if I want an album in this style, I'm actually more likely to reach for We Are Romans. It's still a classic. It's still a banger putting it at A tier. Next up is Redeemer in 2006. So this is where Norma Jean went into a more melodic direction and it was my jam when it came out. I probably listened to this more than any other album in 2006 to the point that I specifically remember random car drives I played it on. A Grand Scene for a Color Film is another fire opening track and maybe even a top 10 of all time. The hooks, the melodies, that breakdown. This quickly followed by the catchy blueprints for Future Homes, which really made the rounds at the tail end of MTV2 actually still playing music videos. <laughs> A 
A small spark versus a giant forest has that amazing buildup before we go over the cliff. Amnesty Please, like Swimming Circles and Songs Sound Much Sadder, go super hard while also delivering these sing-along moments. And speaking of which, I'd argue that this album has more of those per capita than any other album in the discography. I also think that No Passenger, No Parasite is the perfect closer. At the time, I would have easily put this at S tier as well, but re-listening to them all again, I still have others I put higher and I don't want to overload any single tier. So this is going to be the last A tier for me and pretty, pretty high up at that. So then we got The Anti-Mother in 2008. So I frequently see this album get a significantly lower score than a lot of the others. And to be perfectly honest, I hated it when it first came out. Disappointed! Which is extra wild considering it features Paige Hamilton of Helmet, Cove Raber of Sailson, and one of my favorites at the time, Chino Moreno of Deftones. And on that note, Surrender Your Sons is easily a standout here. <laughs> Unfortunately, some of the songwriting and maybe even certain elements of the production just fall a little short for me here. But that said, I don't hate this album anymore by a long shot. In fact, it's vastly grown on me. I really kind of enjoyed it listening to it. I even count a few of these tracks among my favorites in Self-Employed Chemist, Discipline Your Daughters, and Robots 3, Human Zero. So it's far from their best and arguably has some filler, but I will say I still like it more than some of the other ones we're going to get to. I'm going to put this one at B tier. They followed that up with Meridional in 2010. So as much as I loved Redeemer, nothing could have prepared me for this one. As much as I hold up the early arc of this band's career as containing the true benchmarks of the genre, it's hard not to argue that they've only gotten better since then, joining their best foundational elements with a completely expanded sound here. Leaderless and self-enlisted really sets the tone with equal parts punishing heaviness and earworm catchiness. <laughs> The anthem of the Angry Brides comes in with mathy guitars that sound like 10,000 fire ants converging on a target. Not to mention that closing refrain of, You're not getting under my skin! And then without skipping a beat, they move into the more dynamic and progressive elements of Deathbed Atheist. <laughs> You basically can't go a song without stepping on a modern classic with some of the most remembered riffs of their career. A media-friendly turn for the worst. High noise, low output, everlasting tapeworm, the people that surround you on a regular basis. I'm also pretty fond of the haunting nature of falling from the sky. I could go on and on raving about what's so great about every single one of these, but for the sake of time, I'm just gonna say this is an easy S tier for me. Next is Wrongdoers in 2013. So that's a tough act to follow, but I've got just two words for this one. Fucking banger. This album goes so hard on basically every single track with plenty of go-tos for my gym playlist. Hive Mind lights the fuse, slowly building into the first of many tasty, groovy hooks. Then if you got it at five, you got it at 50, we'll just put you on the fucking floor for the first of many times. <laughs> Holy shit, I'm gonna come. Seriously, the insanity of some of these riffs cannot be understated, mixing in some of that every time I die energy as well on tracks like The Potter Has No Hands and Triffids. That bass on sword in mouth fire eyes is so gnarly it should be illegal. And the title track is another instant classic with highly memorable grooves, great syncopated hooks, and an absolutely anthemic chorus. <laughs> Again, it's taking restraint to not play clips from pretty much every song, but in short, this album slaps and is frequently one of my top recommendations for new listeners who just want their head knocked off. So this one is also going to S tier. So moving into the more modern era, we got Polar Similar in 2016. And unfortunately, every meteoric rise has a dip or two, and that brings us to this album. Now understand, again, I don't hate this album. I don't even dislike this album. It's just failed to really strike the same chord with me as their previous efforts. Notable this is also the first to not feature any original members with the departure of Chris Day, so do with that what you will. Even having Sean Ingram of Coalesce fails to get me fully engaged on forever hurtling towards Andromeda, just for instance. On the plus side though, there are some solid moments to be found. Everyone talking over everyone else, death is a living partner, the close and discontent, an ocean of war, and probably my personal favorite, Synthetic Sun. Oh, 
reaction has some solid atmosphere as well. A lot of these tracks have grown on me a lot, especially with this most recent re-listen, but they still fail to just stand up against classics like Bayonet Work or even more recent bangers like If You Got It At 5, You Got It At 50. Overall, I'd say this album, again, has it's gotten better over the years, but even on its latest re-listen, it just feels like it's missing some of that special magic. So for that reason, it ended up at C tier. Good, just not great. And then we had All Hail in 2019. So unfortunately, I'd say that trend somewhat continues here with this another kind of mixed bag later release for me. On the one hand, I love the aggression that it opens with right from the top with those also anthemic scream along moments of Orphan Twin. Same goes for the infectious hypnotic groove of Mind Over Mind, Safety's Last Ferocious Mantra of Pray For This, and classic riffs and woe o os of Landslide Defeater. Translational and with errors prove that they can still ramp up the atmosphere amidst the math meets blues guitars and trace levels of dystopia is just an all around blast that's brimming with energy. Like honestly, it's kind of a banger, but I do lose a little interest after extra dimensional palette cleanser and more generally, I again just can't entirely shake the feeling like I've heard this all before. If this were among my first Norma Jean albums I ever heard, it would probably end up at an A or even higher, but as an avid listener since the 2000s, I'm feeling again more of a C overall, I'd say it's maybe a slight improvement from Polar Similar, but they're kind of on the level for me. And that brings us to Death Rattle Sing For Me in 2022. Now, I'm not sure if Norma Jean were feeling a little bit the same as I was, but in many ways, this one does feel like a direct response to those criticisms. In short, Death Rattle is anything but a polished paint by numbers, instead going for a more raw and even kind of messy primal energy. In fact, it frequently feels as if I'm listening to a live performance with Sleep Explosions video even presented in that format. It's got this bubbling sense of tension constantly threatening to boil over with so much venom in every single syllable building up to that breakdown. Not to mention showcasing the kind of eerie, sleepy, mescaline trip clean vocals that make several appearances over the course of the album. Like in Call for the Blood with its chaotic, almost more sort of noise rock vibe. There are some more traditional sounding tracks like A Killing Word or Spearmint Revolt with those great alternations of big, groovy, head-bobbing riffs with the searing yet highly infectious screaming sounding like it could have come right off of Redeemer. But then we also get turns into more atmospheric kind of performance art like Memorial Horde, Aria Obscura, El Roy, and the eight plus minute closer Heartache, providing an even more experimental take on some of the ideas from Meridional. Now, obviously I haven't had nearly as much time to spend with this album as the others, so time will tell where it ultimately settles. But right now in comparison to the last two, it feels both less focused yet also far more interesting as a result. It's not as instantly accessible or single worthy probably, but I I appreciate that it sounds more like the passion project and artistic vision of a lineup that again at this point no longer includes any of the original members that formed the band to begin with. So yeah, kind of mixed feelings at this point, but innovation is something I deeply respect, especially this far into the game, and at least at this point that's enough for me to put this one above All Hail and Polar Similar at B tier. Y'all check out this playlist for plenty more metalcore tier lists. And of course, let me know down in the comments as always, how would you rank these albums differently? And let's just have a conversation. It makes it way more interesting, but that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.